Hi, I'm Jason Toshlog. I'm VP of Products at Flexware Innovation and uh, oversee one of our products, Acuments, which is focused on manufacturing intelligence. And today I'm going to describe uh, what OEE is. So OEE stands for Overall Equipment Effectiveness And it's ultimately a measure of productivity of a, a manufacturing process or an individual machine. And what OEE is good at is giving you a, a benchmark of how well your machine or your line or your plant is performing compared to other machines, lines, or plants. And it is a great tool for understanding how you're doing right now compared to how you've done in the past or how other similar processes are performing. It alone does not tell you what you need to do to improve that, but it summarizes that information. And you typically surround OEE with additional pieces of information that help describe the losses in your process. OEE started as a, as a de facto industry standard. It is pretty common across industries. And we measure it in a way that allows us to uh, consider multiple aspects of your equipment or your process. So OE is made up of, of three pieces. So OEE actually equals a metric called availability. And we ultimately multiply that by another metric known as performance. And we ultimately multiply that by a third metric known as quality. And the idea of combining these three metrics is that it provides a, a better, more holistic view of your machine or your process. So if you looked at any one of these alone, you might sub-optimize your process. So if you were trying to reduce downtime at the expense of everything else, which is really what availability focuses on, that might increase your spoilage or scrap in your process because um, I'm not taking the machine down and repairing it when it needs to be repaired. The same thing with performance, which is a, a factor that, that looks at the rate at which we're pr producing product. So if I increase the machine's rate, so I'm making products faster, that could also decrease my quality or increase my scrap or spoilage. Um, so the idea of OEE is that it's taking all three of these factors into consideration and giving you one metric that, that represents the, the overall effectiveness of that, that machine or that process. So let's break down these three pieces a little bit more. So ultimately OEE is measuring um, really two things, but it's the percentage of time that you're running in an ideal state, producing at an ideal rate, producing uh, perfect quality products. That's what, that's what an ideal OEE score would, would represent. It is a percentage, so the ideal score would be 100%. So in order to re uh, receive an OEE of 100%, you'd have to have an availability of 100%, a performance of 100%, and a quality of uh, 100%. Um, let's start looking at this from a, how, how do you determine these values? Most people look at this as kind of a cascading definition of losses in your process. So the loss is measuring um, basically the delta between perfect and where you're actually running. So if we start, this is a very typical way it, that OEE is described when we're looking at it. If you look at the first, this first bar is rep representing um, all available time. So let's say we're looking at a, a production shift, an eight hour shift. Total available time would be the full eight hours of this shift. So we'll just, we'll just start with eight hours. Um, now, typically, you're not planning on running that full time. You may have uh, outages, you may have planned maintenance, or just unscheduled time because you don't have demand for your product, depending on your industry. So the first loss that we can represent is this space here, and this is really unplanned, unplanned production. So I am choosing not to run at this time. This is a choice. Um, and so now I have some, some time left. This is my scheduled time. 
And this exact terminology can differ from system to system or implementation to implementation. So the next thing we look at is, uh, okay, now of the schedule time, now I'm, I'm, I'm planning to run for this entire time. Now I'm looking for losses or inefficiencies um, in my process. So the first one is we're going to look at availability. So that bar is made up of, this is the time I'm actually running. And of our employees, uh, of our plan time, this piece represents some downtime. So I was planning to run the machine or the line, but I can't because of a maintenance issue or an operator wasn't available to operate the machine. Whatever those reasons are, that machine was not available to be run at that time. Now if we look at performance, it's the next type of loss that we can, we can create. Um, a lot of times this is uh, defined as like the net production or net running time. So let's call it net for now. And the additional losses that come from here are represented by not running the machine or the line at the, at the, at the full rate of speed. So if a, if a mach machine or line is supposed to produce a certain part, a number of parts per hour, and you've dialed back that machine so it's not running as fast, you're losing performance. You can also lose performance uh, through no fault of the machine, but maybe parts aren't available. So in some industries we call that standby loss. It could be blocked or starved events. Those are all things that, uh, where we lose performance. So we'll just call this a, a performance loss. And then finally, quality is the most intuitive or easiest to calculate. This is looking at good parts produced or assembled or what have you. And the loss in quality comes from scrap, also called spoilage. Um, you could also factor in the idea that in some production processes you have the ability to rework product. So this is good parts the first time, which is an important distinction. So if I run a part, it's bad, I can rerun it through, there's some loss there. So that can be scrap or rework, or and rework. So ultimately, availability, we're looking at the number of hours, minutes, seconds of our eight hour shift that we were actually running. And we're also tracking the, the inverse of that, which is the downtime of that period of time. Now typically, uh, software in this industry is not just tallying the total number of time you're in one of these states, it's also going to describe all the individual downtime events that occurred and why they occurred. What was the fault? What was the reason for that, that downtime? That information is hugely valuable in getting additional value out of OEE metrics. Uh, performance loss, typically we calculate that based off of we take this running time times our, our ideal rate of production and we say we should have been able to produce this number of parts in this period of time. And if we didn't, um, that delta is our loss and that's how we calculate that. But we also have a bunch of events here that tell us why we have that per, uh, performance loss. So it could be the, the machine rate. So somebody chose to dial it back. It could be uh, slow running events. It could be standby. All of these things um, could factor into performance. And then finally, with quality, we're the, the additional piece of information that make this, this, inform or this metric more valuable is the specific uh, counts of, of scrap reasons. So we've actually got reason codes reasons for the scrap, spoilage, or rework. Um, you could have uh, defect codes as well. And sometimes those can be synonymous and sometimes those are different. For an individual uh, product that you're building, it may have the opportunity to have multiple defects, but you can only count it as one, 
one item when you go to choose to scrap it. Uh, but tallying those individual defects allows us to go uh, do root cause analysis and actually improve the, the process. So to summarize, OEE is a high level metric that considers a couple of factors. And again, ultimately, it's a great benchmarking tool. You can compare yourself shift over shift, day over day, month over month. How am I doing? How's this line doing over time? As that number goes up or down, we can try to understand why. What are we changing about the process that, that allows that number to, to shift? Um, it could uh, display an opportunity. So if, if I'm capacity constrained in a manufacturing process, and I see that my OEE is very low, I've got two choices. I can either try to improve my existing process or I can go buy new equipment. And I can look at the, the, the finances related to those, those couple of decisions. Um, but the real value of these OEE tools, technologies, and data is in addition to these, this high level benchmarking metric, if you drill down into each end of the, the pieces or parts of, of OEE, and then ultimately into the, the raw data that helped uh, you calculate that information, that's where you find the pieces of information that are going to help you continuously improve your process. And this is where people are, are making differences. So if I have um, a certain number of occurrences of, of scrap or downtime or the, the total duration of downtime reasons, if I have those listed in um, sorted by magnitude, I can know where my highest priority should be to go fix those problems. So I can, I can prioritize maintenance as effort or uh, maybe you have industrial engineers that are looking at improving process flow. So OEE um, does span multiple industries, but what we have found is that uh, the value of OEE and the way you assess it uh, can be slightly different in each industry. So for example, in the pharmaceutical or regulated industries where quality is, is a huge deal, where we focus a lot on regulations and adhering to those regulations, uh, the change over time between switching products in a manufacturing process is, is very rigorous. There's a lot of uh, line clearances, cleaning, activities that have to be tracked and, and maintained. So a typical OEE score would be lower in those industries by its very nature of how that, that works. If you get into high volume manufacturing like can making, um, you've got a huge volume and uh, flow rate of, of products coming through. A lot of the plants are running 24 by seven. So this available time and schedule time are almost the same. And we're trying to get every bit of performance out of these, these metrics. Um, so in, in that industry, you have a, a, a different vantage point of what's important with the data. Actually, in some of these industries where you have high volume production, even though we're counting discrete uh, parts produced, the line is characterized almost like a continuous flow. It almost looks like the, the cans in, in the can making industry are flowing through the process. So in that case, things like slow run, running events and standby events where I'm blocked or starved, you're really looking at the flow of, uh, and dynamics within the, the plant or the process to get value. So certain things have different uh, levels of, of meaning. One last metric I would th throw up as I, as I talk about this is sometimes people are really focused on, um, especially from a maintenance perspective, just how available was the machine when it was supposed to be there. And so availability uh, gives them some insight into that. Um, but some of the unplanned production time is, is planned downtime. This means that I intentionally took the machine down for a period of time to do preventative maintenance. So they want to look at how my investment in planned downtime and preventative maintenance is ultimately improving these numbers after I make those changes. As you can see, planned downtime is actually tracked before we look at availability, performance, and quality. So there's another metric that's much like OEE. It's called TEEP which stands for Total Equipment Effectiveness Performance, I believe. And its scope is of all time. So T looks at all availability. So it looks at any unplanned production or planned downtime as still part of the overall window which we're measuring. And what that, that can tell you is you can look at that delta between TEEP and OEE, and that helps you assess uh, 
these planned and unplanned and unplanned production and planned downtime events or, or planned maintenance events and how they are they are affecting you. So that's a quick overview of the OEE metric and how it's used and the pieces and parts that make it up. Thank you.